Hello YouTube, in this episode of the Aquatrophy series, I'm going to be covering a portion of the intensity windows that a lot of people have applied in their training, but that few have intellectualized. And it's actually something very simple, but it is the key to hypertrophy training. You see, when you do something that might be uh, quantified as 70% intensity, that is 70% of a one rep max. And by default, it also means that it's going to affect the first rep. And if you only do one rep, then it doesn't really have an impact because that's a very clear cut notion. But what happens if you do more than one rep? You see, if you do a set at 70%, the first rep is 70%. The second rep isn't. It might be, it might be 71%. It might be 72%. And then the, the third rep is going to be 73, 74, etc., etc. So as you see, the intensity ramps up as the sets advance. And that's basically all there is to understand when it comes to intensity and hypertrophy and bodybuilding training. This is your goal. This is the reason why we do reps and sets, is to ramp that up. Because that intensity exists and evolves throughout the sessions. Meaning what? As I just explained, the more reps you do, the more the intensity ramps up. So you can actually get to a 95% intensity with a set that started at 70%. So you're going to taste levels of intensity that are going to be extremely close to failure. This is why we train to failure. We want to get that. We want to get that super high quality tonnage. Now, is the set by itself going to be higher intensity because of it? Yes, but not as much as you'd think because from what I said, you could ask, well, in that case, there is absolutely no use for any set with two or three reps that are going to be 90% intensity because I can get the same amount of intensity with more reps within my other set with more reps. Well, yes and no. You have to compound all of the intensity numbers together. So if you have 10 reps, each and every single intensity that you're going to get for each rep needs to be added and then divided by 10 and that's your intensity for the set but you're going to find that this concept also exists throughout the sets if you do five sets of five and the reps for the five sets the number one was 70 percent it evolves throughout the set okay when you start your second set on your first rep is it 70 percent no why you're pre-fatigued your muscle is not in the pristine state it was for set number one. And so as you see, the number of sets you do, along with the number of reps, has an impact on your intensity rates. And that is important. Why? Because this needs to be controlled. If you don't have in your head the idea that this is going to snowball, you're going to misprogram. Because this intensity creates one thing and one thing only, fatigue muscular fatigue, structural fatigue, and that is under your control at all times because that's what creates growth. But if you don't know that, you might replicate a number of sets and reps that is going to eventually lead to you being in a state where you cannot recover, you cannot go back to baseline, and you're going to be stuck in a rut, and you won't get why. It's because you see the tree, but you don't see the forest behind the tree. The tree is the intensity rate. The forest is the reps you do within that and the sets that come with it. All of that is end in hand. But as far as intensity goes, that's all you need to understand. That that number evolves throughout the session. Once that is acquired, we are now starting to introduce the concept of frequency within the week. So weekly frequency, because what I just discussed was intra-workout frequency. That intensity that is going to create that fatigue is going to exist every time you train, okay? And the relationship between the intensities, the amount of time it takes to recover, and the progression that they create, that's what makes a program. That is intensity throughout the program. That's what you want to control. Now that you understand that, we're going to have some fun with it. Because now that we know that intensity can evolve, and that we're the ones who make it evolve with our amounts of reps and sets, we can apply different strategies to always get a taste of high intensity training without putting ourselves at risk so that we accumulate high quality tonnage. And for that, you have multiple ways. 
Evolving rep ranges are a good way to do that for the reasons I just explained. You can do pre-fatigue for certain muscles. You can also do supersets because, as I just said, supersets might be something that is going to allow you to get high intensities for every single muscle group and then potentially end up doing a double superset in the same set for the same muscle on purpose. Because you know that you're going to enter one set pre-fatigued and that set is going to be artificially inflated in terms of intensity. If that happens to you and you didn't control it, it's going to hinder progression because it hinders performance. But if you did actually schedule it, then it's all good because it's it's also going to feed into the higher intensity. Now, understand that this principle I just described has its limits, meaning what? The, the accumulation of intensities to the point where anything becomes intense, one, has its limitations, and two, shouldn't be actually used to its extreme. Why? One, it has its limits. Why? Because of your ability to go back to baseline. You will always retain within your muscles the ability to perform certain tasks. For example, once you get to a certain point, the ability to do 10 push-ups will never really be taken away from you. And that's something I'm going to discuss more when I discuss baselines and how deep you need to dig when you train. You don't want to go back to the point where you cannot even go back to the minimum baseline anymore. But that is going to be a super important topic that I'm going to cover in this series. And the second one is, besides that thing that is pretty much an impossibility, exists a margin where you don't really want to go there because that's overtraining. So even before you reach a point where you can't even go back to baseline, there is that entire portion where you might be able to go back to baseline, but the weights and the percentages that are going to be allowed to be moved are, are going to be irrelevant. And why are they irrelevant? For one simple reason, because your ability to perform is based off of your percentage fresh. All of your percentages are fresh. They might evolve throughout the workout, but you yourself, when you program and you think about it, need to think about yourself when you're at the start of the training session, okay? That is going to allow you to also give yourself an ability to decipher between things that are going to create muscle fatigue and things that are just a waste of time that we can call junk volume. Because if you base that off of the evolving intensity rates, you're always going to find that you can do more. And that's not good because you'll end up just working out for five hours. This is why we always keep in mind that the percentage is based off of the pure one rep max, not the one that is ended when we're fatigued. If you want to get more of what I just said, check the video I made about intensity. It details it more because I explained the two things uh, in better terms. But basically you can use that fatigued intensity, that artificially inflated intensity rate to program supersets and pre-fatigue, but you don't want it to be what you always do. It should be marginal. The most of the time within the program, you're going to be programming your lifts so that they are based off of your fresh intensity rate. So I'm going to leave you with that. So many things to talk about. Next time in the hypertrophy series, I'm going to discuss intensity and its relationship with the qualities of size and strength. So stay tuned and have a good day.